The Scorching Summer Barbecue is an event that has taken place twice throughout Dead by Daylight's history. The last time that it occurred was during last summer, however it actually debuted almost 6 years ago back in 2018, and unlike the 2023 Scorching Summer Barbecue event which had its own separate tome entry through which players could earn cosmetic rewards, the original event had none of that as the archives weren't even a part of the game back then. Instead, there were these special personal challenges which upon completion would reward players with the propane hammer for the hillbilly and the free song bird slip dress for Kate Denson. But what were the requirements for these challenges? Well, see, during the event, two frozen cocktail machines and two grill hooks would spawn on the map by default, which could be increased to 7 by using and burning the barbecue invitation offering. As a survivor, you had to finish repairing a generator in order to receive one so-called frosty margarita. And as a killer, you received special survivor chops by putting victims on the hook for the first time. These were two really cool limited time currencies which were used for completing the event's challenges, and in my opinion, it's kind of a shame that they didn't return for last year's summer barbecue event. Though something about these two items is a little unclear. For survivors, it makes sense that they receive a frosty margarita, since they're literally repairing a frozen cocktail machine. But why were there survivor chops for killers? Were killers eating the survivors? Well, however strange it may sound, this theory isn't all that unlikely, since there are other items in the game that also suggest this, for example the survivor pudding. Now, the name of it could act as proof on its own, but moreover there also appear to be all kinds of eyeballs and fingers in the actual pudding. So do killers really eat survivors? Let me know what you think about all of this down in the comments. Alright now, I bet that you've never seen this thing in Dead by Daylight before. These are called Lunar New Year vessels and they were part of the Moonrise event that took place back in 2019 in honor of the Chinese Year of the Hawk. Basically, you had to collect these different vessels which could be spawned in by burning the red envelope offering and successfully finishing a match while in possession of one would award you with several points, through which players could obtain special so-called golden coins. The golden coins could then later be spent on Moonrise Cosmetics in the in-game store. Fun fact, these coins were actually implemented in the game with the Howling Grounds Lunar event one year prior to that, and back then they actually had two different versions for both killers and survivors. For example, burned coins had to be collected from the killer site in order to obtain this Huntress head cosmetic, and gold coins had to be obtained by survivors in order to get this jacket for David King. Still, I personally find the concept of these vessels and coins from the Moonrise event incredibly interesting. Now, strangely enough, these gold and burnt coins have never ever returned since that event, which I personally find kind of sad since their overall concept is really cool, and it would be pretty neat if the developers chose to bring them back for the next Lunar New Year event. Another limited time currency in DVD was the so-called Putrid Serum, which we know is pretty closely connected to the Blight, as he regularly injects himself with a similar kind of substance. The Putrid Serum currency was able to be earned in two Halloween events, the Hallowed Blight and the Withering Blight. During the latter, Putrid Serum could be obtained from the 73 tiers of the Rift during Tome 1 Awakening, however this was the much less interesting way of obtaining it. During the Hallowed Blight Halloween event, however, Putrid Serum could be earned by filling up these so-called Nectar Vials. The Nectar Vial basically acted as a meter which was filled by interacting with event objectives, for example, harvesting visceral cankers as a survivor or hooking people on special cankerous hooks as a killer. The vial had three markers on it and any amount of nectar that did not fill the vial to the nearest upper marker would be lost, while any nectar that already filled a marker however would be safe, so basically these markers acted as checkpoints more or less. As a killer, each hook awarded you with one sixth of a nectar vial, meaning that in order to fill it up to the max, you had to get six hooks until the end of the match. When playing as a survivor, simply interacting with a visceral canker will slowly fill up your nectar vial. By default, there were two cankers hooks and two visceral cankers that would spawn on the map at the start of the match, however this could be increased by using the exclusive Pustula Petals offering. Now, whenever you successfully completed a match after having completely filled up a vial, this would transfer over to one putrid serum, and the total max of 60 putrid serum would allow you to buy two whole blighted cosmetic sets, or alternatively, six separate cosmetics. 
The last type of special currency that we're going to take a look at today are the so-called trinkets. These exist in three different iterations and even though they are a relatively new currency, trinkets are slowly but surely starting to spread to and be included in every single Dead by Daylight event. Up to now all trinket versions have been used in order to purchase special event cosmetics. The first type that was introduced to the game were the Dark Trinkets, which got released during the 2023 Haunted by Daylight Halloween event, and could be obtained by completing challenges through the special tome that was part of this event. The icon for this shows an eerie green trinket filled with void energy. The second iteration of this currency were the Frosty Trinkets, which came out with the third Bone Chill event during late December 2023 to early January 2024, which could also be obtained by doing challenges from Event Tome 8 Bone Chill 2023. Their icon features an icy blue trinket with frosty ice spikes. Now, you might be wondering and asking yourself, what is the third trinket type? Well, if you didn't know already, the upcoming Blood Moon is going to feature a brand new version called Thrombotic Trinkets. The icon for them shows an ashy grey trinket adorned with vine-like bloody veins, and they are going to be obtained through completing challenges from Event Tome 9, Blood Moon 2024. Speaking of this event, it looks really promising and I genuinely hope that it's going to be as good as the last few events, mainly haunted by Daylight and Bone Chill. Fun fact, this Blood Moon event is also going to have a special event map item variation called the Blood Sense map, which is honestly kinda crazy since we haven't gotten a new map type ever since the 1.1.2 update back in 2016, and we also haven't received any type of new event item in quite a while now too. From what I understand there is also going to be a special offering named the Bloodshot Eye, and honestly I can't wait to try out this event when it comes out in a couple of days. What do you guys think about this event and limited time currencies as a whole? Let me know down in the comments as I would love to know. Well, yeah, I guess that was it. We went through all of DBD's limited time currencies. Thank you guys so much for 6000 subscribers. We managed to get from 5 to 6k in so little time and it's kind of amazing really. I genuinely hope that you found this video interesting and that you learned something new from it. If you did, then make sure to let me know by leaving a like down below and also I would be glad if you considered subscribing as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!